All right, and for our technology news, Marie Francisco from Amsterdam will be reporting. Marie. Thank you, Alma. There was a different ring to the Nasdaq's closing bell on Tuesday, November 12th, as the stock market welcomed RoboStock ETF. I'm, I must say, this is the first guest that I've uh, not been that willing to take a handshake from, but uh, I understand there's uh, some built-in limits to avoid any harm to, to human interface, so we appreciate that. That is Universal Robots UR5 robot arm closing the closing bell at the NASDAQ. The first time a non-human rang the closing bell there. It marks the debut of the new robotic stock index. Google is beefing up its mobile offerings, allowing Glass to play music and adding a new low-cost smartphone to its lineup. Fred Katemaya reports. Music to your ears, but music for your glasses? Those high-tech specs Google sells called Glass will now offer millions of tracks. The New York Times reports that Google's new feature will let Glass users search for songs, scan playlists, and hear music all by voice command. And to make it audible, Google's introducing earbuds customizable in four colors. The Times says these added features could help plug Google's music selections, such as its music subscription service. Google is also beefing up its mobile phone lineup. The Wall Street Journal says Google's Motorola unit will introduce a relatively low-cost smartphone, the Moto G, on Wednesday. It says the new phone will be cheaper than the $260 version that leaked out over the weekend on Amazon's UK site. The move risks riling fellow phone makers using Google's Android operating system. The news comes just one day after Motorola halved the price of its high-end predecessor, the Moto X, which has had disappointing sales. The rules have changed. Japan's mobile gamers are moving to apps to get their daily fix, leaving the old web-based gaming platforms behind. And some companies are starting to struggle as a result. Here's more. Once upon a time, people couldn't get enough of games like this fishing simulator, but they're looking more and more like a dying breed. Gamers are now shifting to their smartphones and getting their gaming fix through apps. Japan's social gaming giants, used to luring users to their platforms, are struggling to keep up with the times. DNA, Japan's third biggest online gaming company by market cap, saw operating profits drop 17% in the first half of this business year. DNA shares have plunged this year, while the wider index powered ahead. Things aren't that much different from rival Greed. The company announced last month that it's laying off over 200 employees due to sluggish sales. And while profits seem to have staged a tentative recovery, they still remain well below levels of a year ago. The more app-centric approach to gaming has produced some winners. Gung Ho Online Entertainment sales grew 10 times in the first nine months of this year, pushing its shares up more than 500%. All because of one killer title, Puzzle and Dragons. Think of online gaming firms like movie studios. If you don't have one or two blockbusters for every five movies you make, you're in trouble, says industry consultant Serkan Toto. And this hit-driven business model can be risky. If you look at Zynga's user base, for example, uh, it's largely, um, it's, very, it's very diversified. It's not only uh, people in the US that are playing Zynga games on Facebook and now increasingly on mobile devices, but people in Southeast Asia, in Europe, in South America, and in other places. You don't have that kind of, um, you don't have that kind of diversified user base in the case of DNA and Greed. Going global might mean buying foreign companies, like Gung Ho, which together with SoftBank is taking a majority stake in Finnish online gaming firm Supercell. It's very, very difficult for Japanese companies to break out of their domestic uh, market because uh, the Japanese market is so unique. It has just different uh, conditions, it has just different uh, success factors that are totally, um, you know, are totally different from other places in the world. And I think that uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, Japanese game companies have tried and now are now trying in the case of Gung Ho um, to overcome that, uh, those differences by acquiring companies. And I think that uh, we will see more acquisitions like that in the future. 
The question is whether in an environment of falling profits and share prices, DNA and GRI will feel bold enough to take on the world. But by now, it's clear. The game has changed.